All right, so today we are looking at non-uniform acceleration and specifically we're going to focus on how to solve these problems numerically as well as analytically. So, so far we have only dealt with constant acceleration problems where we can use the SUVAT equations, but as soon as the acceleration varies, we cannot use the SUVAT equations anymore. So for an example, we can consider the aerodynamic drag on a car and it's given by this equation on the screen. And for this case, our velocity is not a constant. So the aerodynamic force is proportional to the square of the velocity. And Newton's second law will have the form for the x direction as f equals ma, where f is the sum of all the forces. And in this case, it is our propulsion force minus our aerodynamic drag. If we go and we rearrange, Newton's second law, we can get an equation for acceleration. And you can clearly see that in this case, acceleration is dependent on velocity. So it is not uniform acceleration. Now, instantaneous velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. We can write this as V, which is our velocity, is a derivative of displacement or x dot. We can then determine the change of displacement and we can take our equation at the top, which is V equals dx dt. We can multiply on both sides and then we get dx equals V dt. And we can integrate both sides and then we get the difference in displacement or delta x equals the integral of V dt. The instantaneous acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. We can write that as, as A, our acceleration, is the derivative of V with respect to time or V dot. This can also be written as X double dot or the second derivative of displacement. Similarly to our velocity displacement scenario, we can see that acceleration has a relationship in the change of velocity. And we can rearrange the equation again by multiplying both sides with dt, integrate both sides, and then we can get the change of velocity from point one to point two, or delta v is the integral of a dt. And we can also rearrange it a bit to get acceleration is equal to velocity times the derivative of velocity with respect to displacement. Now there are two ways to go and solve for cases where acceleration is non-uniform. And we're going to have a look here at the numerical method first. Now consider a velocity time profile of a particle undergoing non-uniform acceleration in a straight line. The slope of this curve, which is the derivative of velocity, varies with time and thus our acceleration is not constant. Now we can approximate the derivative dv dt with the use of a simple numerical method. The numerical method involves splitting the curve into small sections of time. And we can assume that the line between each time step is straight. Thus, we can assume constant acceleration and we can use the SUVAT equations. Now, the rate of acceleration is then assumed to remain constant at its average value during the time step delta t, where delta t is the current time step minus the previous time step. And in this figure, you can see delta t is equal to one. Now, suppose that we have some numerical data of a moving body. We need to be able to convert numerical data between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. For converting position to velocity, we have data for position, and we wish to calculate the velocity for each time step. Now, the velocity for the IF time step is shown in this equation, where V subscript I is equal to the current position for the given time step minus the previous position value for the previous time time step divided by delta t. And this can often just be written as delta x i divided by delta t. And it's the numerical approximation for the equation that we saw previously of v equals dx dt. For the scenario where we have velocity and we want to calculate acceleration, uh, a very similar approach is adopted to the previous case, whereby the velocity is numerically differentiated. So we can say that the acceleration at time step i is equal to the velocity of time step i minus the velocity for the previous time step divided by delta t, which can also be written as delta v i divided by delta t. And this is the numerical approximation for the equation a equals dv dt. If we want to go from position to acceleration, we can numerically differentiate twice using the previous two methods I've just shown you. Now, if you want to move back from acceleration to velocity, we apply the approximation that the acceleration is constant for a given time step. So we can calculate the 
average acceleration for that time step by adding the current acceleration for time step i plus the acceleration for the previous time step divided by 2. And so the change in velocity for the i of step is then given by this equation. So the change in velocity or delta v for the i of step is given by this equation where essentially you multiply the average velocity with your time step. And so the actual velocity is velocity at time step i equals the velocity at the previous time step plus the average acceleration times delta t. Alternatively, we can calculate the velocity time step i as our initial velocity at time zero plus the sum of the average velocities from the start to your current time step multiplied by delta t. And this will approximate to the equation of velocity equals our initial velocity at time step zero plus the integral of a dt. Now a similar approach can be used for when we want to move from velocity to position whereby we say that the position at time step i is equal to the position at the previous time step plus the average velocity times delta t. And the numerical approximation is again in similar form as displacement equals our initial displacement at time zero plus the integral of v dt. And then for the final case, if we want to go from acceleration to position, we can apply these two methods sequentially. So let's have a look at an example where we can use numerical methods to approximate velocity. So in this table, we have values for an accelerometer, which recorded acceleration values every 0.2 seconds. And now we need to go and determine the velocity at the end of the acceleration period. Now we can assume that we are initially at rest. So our starting velocity is zero. So for each step, we calculate a new velocity using this equation that we discussed previously. And we know we are initially at rest, so our initial velocity is equal to zero. Now we can substitute the values in, which is essentially our velocity at time step one is equal to our velocity at time step zero, which is zero in this case, plus our average velocity, which is eight plus 7.1 divided by two, multiplied by our delta t, which is 0.2 seconds. And we get our velocity at time step one as 1.51 meters per second. And now we can go and repeat this exercise for all the time steps. And we can see here the velocity at time step two is calculated as 2.74 meters per second. So completing this for each time step will give us the following table where we've added a column for velocity and you can see that the final velocity is 3.78 meters per second. So that was how we can go about solving problems of non-uniform acceleration numerically. The second method of solving these problems is using analytical integration. So for some problems we have analytical expression describing the non-uniform acceleration and acceleration might be known as a function of time, or velocity or displacement and using integration or differentiation we can derive some formulas that can help us get to the answer. So if we look at acceleration with respect to time equals the integral of our initial velocity to our final velocity. So for this case we can write that the acceleration as a function of time is equal to dv divided by dt. We can multiply both sides with dt and put an integral on each side of the equation mark and we can solve this analytically where v0 is the velocity at time 0 and v1 is the velocity at time 1. And this will lead to the equation of our end velocity of all velocity at time 1 is equal to our initial velocity plus the integral of the acceleration with respect to time. And this equation can be used to find the expression for velocity as a function of time. If we were also interested in position, we can apply the following where the velocity with respect to time is equal to dx dt. And as we did with previously, we can rearrange it to get an expression with, with integrals on both sides where x0 is the initial position. And this is often defined at zero and x1 is the position at time one. And this will lead to an equation where x1 equals x0 plus the integral of v with respect to time. We can also get the situation where acceleration is a function of velocity. So we can write acceleration as a function of velocity equals dv divided by dt. 
and we can rearrange this equation to get the formula which states that time one equals the integral from v0 to v1 of the equation one over a as a function of velocity dv. And this will allow us to obtain an equation for velocity with respect to time. Now for position, we can then use a similar approach starting with velocity as a function of time equals dx divided by dt. We also know from an explanation earlier that acceleration as a function of velocity is also equal to velocity times dv divided by dx. And we can rearrange this equation to get the final equation of x1 equals x0 plus the integral of v divided by acceleration as a function of velocity. And this will give us a relation between velocity and position without reference to time. Lastly, we can also get acceleration as a function of displacement. And as before, we can rewrite this as acceleration as a function of position equals velocity times dv divided by dx. Rearranging this equation will give us a final equation of velocity one squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times the integral of a as a function of position. Now entering a given expression for acceleration as a function of position and integrating would give us velocity as a function of position as well. And this can be related to time using velocity as a function of position equals dx divided by dt. And we end up getting the equation shown. So in summary, for problems where numerical data of acceleration, velocity, position, etc. is available, we can use numerical methods to solve them. For problems where they give you an equation for acceleration, we can use an analytical method to get the answer. In the case where the solution is approximated, we can assume acceleration is constant within a given small time step, but not constant between steps. And we can apply the SUVAT equation separately for each time step. And finally, when an equation for acceleration is given as a function of time, velocity, or position, we can use analytical integration methods to get the solution to the problem. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this content. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section below. I'm also on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you can connect with me and ask your questions there. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.